Hi guys and welcome to Tech Based. In this video, we're going to talk about the biggest Windows 11 25H2 update in the month of December. This is basically the November update, but it has been released on December the 1st because it was the Thanksgiving week. So Microsoft postponed the update for this month, even though it is the November update. I'm going to call it the December update because of course it was released in this month. In this video, we are talking about the build 26200.7309 or build code KB5. 5070311. This is the feature update as you may have guessed and we have a lot of new features that were announced in the release preview channel a couple of weeks ago. And in this video, we're going to go through the most important stuff that has been changed, some announcements that Microsoft is making and also some known issues that we may find in this build. So if you enjoy videos like these, please don't forget to leave a like below and also subscribe to the TechBase channel with the notification bell activated so that you won't miss any future uploads like this one. So let's begin with the video. First of all, Microsoft is announcing yet again that they have worked on the simplified Windows update titles and now it will only show the date prefixes, the KB number and the build or version that are related to that update. So I think this is a pretty good change. Also Microsoft is announcing that due to their reduced operations during the Western holidays in December and New Year's Day, Microsoft will not release a non-security preview update in December 2025. The monthly security update will still be available as scheduled but the regular monthly servicing including both both security updates and non-security preview updates will resume in January 2026. So for the main release this year, we only have the security update left, which will be released most likely next week. Now, of course, to get all the latest updates, make sure you open up the settings app and then go into the Windows update section and then make sure you have enabled to get the latest updates as soon as they're available and then click on check for updates. This is the easiest way an official way to get all the latest updates. Now, let's talk about some new changes in this update. We have, of course, some Copilot Plus PC experiences, some new AI features related to the agent and settings, click to do the Windows Studio effects, and also some changes in File Explorer and Search, but we're not going to cover those because they are just AI features. But talking about new Windows 11 features that are present for pretty much any user, first of all, Microsoft is uh, adding a new option in the Advanced Settings section inside System, and then Advanced, you're now going to be able to see the Virtual Workspaces section that allows you to enable or disable virtual environments such as Hyper v and windows sandbox there are also some changes related to windows spotlight if you have your desktop background set to that and you'll notice that the context menu will now include two options learn more about this background and next desktop background inside the file explorer microsoft is making a few changes for example they are working on adding dark mode to more dialogues inside the file explorer so for example when you're trying to delete a folder this dialog will now support dark mode and also the copy move delete dialogues some progress bars chart views confirmation, skip, override, and file selection, all of those will now support dark mode. Also, Microsoft is working on improving the context menu, and uh, this change is not available to a lot of people, only to a small number of devices, but they will include common actions such as share, copy, and move into a single organized menu, so the context menu will be a bit smaller after this change will be available on any computer. Also, the full screen experience for Xbox will be now available to more Windows 11 handheld devices not for any computer, but you can enable that from the gaming section of settings if you want to do so. Inside Bluetooth and devices and then mobile devices in the settings app, Microsoft is now allowing you to add and manage your mobile devices directly from here and you can add your device as easy as that. And here on this page, you can manage pretty much anything. And if you click on a device, you're going to be able to also manage all the features that are available and related to that device. We're also getting the new OneDrive icon, which will be present inside settings accounts and then here in the homepage, we're going to be able to see the new OneDrive icon. Also related to Quick Machine Recovery inside System and then in the Recovery section, if you go into Quick Machine Recovery, Microsoft will only run a one-time scan when both of these options are turned on by default, so that thing was changed. Also inside System and Recovery, Microsoft is testing behind the scenes as a hidden feature, the new point-in-time restore feature that I'm not going to go in depth with it, but it is basically a rebranded system restore with a UI now, and you can customize the restore restore point frequency, the restore point retention, and also the maximum usage limit. You're going to be able to see that inside the recovery environment whenever a point in time restore was saved. Inside settings, accessibility, and then keyboard or text cursor, Microsoft has moved some settings from the old control panel to settings. For example, the cursor blink rate has been moved to this section inside text cursor, and also inside the keyboard section, the character repeat delay and rate. The about section inside settings has also received an updated layout that now organizes device details and related 
options in one place and you can also quickly access features such as the stored settings at the bottom of the page here as a quick link. Inside the taskbar, Microsoft has also added the new animations for whenever you are hovering over your opened apps. As you can see, we now have a nice animation that is basically a transition between apps and thumbnails. So I think that is pretty good. And also they will add the new share with Copilot option inside your taskbar, but this is also for a small number of insiders. There's also a pretty important fix related to the automatically hide the taskbar setting. If you go to taskbar behaviors and you have the automatically hide the taskbar option enabled, sometimes this option would unexpectedly turn off after seeing a message saying a toolbar is already hidden on this side of your screen. That is now fixed, so I think this is also great. There are also a few changes related to widgets, for example, a new default dashboard that you can choose in the widgets board settings, and also the dashboard icons in the widget navigation bar now show numbers that correspond to the number of alerts from that dashboard. Related to Windows Share, Microsoft now allows multi-file sharing inside the drag tray, which is also something pretty nice. You can now also disable the drag tray if you don't want it. You can disable it from the settings app, of course, then go to system, and then you're gonna have here nearby sharing, and then you can disable the drag tray from here. Also, you can now share OneDrive files through other apps. The options appear under share using when you select the copy link, but you must be signed into your Microsoft account. Now, there are a small change that I think is pretty good is the search box in the start menu, which now matches the new start menu in size. This update aims to create a smoother transition when searching. So I think that is pretty nice. And of course, other than this, there have been a lot of fixes applied to this update. But if you want to check an in-depth video about that and also an in-depth article, you can just check the article below or the official Microsoft blog post if you want to see that. Microsoft is also updating the service in stack, which basically ensures that you can install Microsoft updates reliably. That is something that happens every time in the main release. Now some known issues in this update and the first one is quite annoying if you ask me. Watch what happens when I open up the <laughs> file explorer. Yeah, the file explorer or just flashes white screens whenever you're opening it. So I'm not sure what Microsoft is doing with the file explorer, but this is a known issue, of course. Hopefully it will be fixed in a future update, but don't get me wrong, please correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that this white screen has been inside the file explorer for quite a while. I can't remember the last time when the file explorer inside Windows 11 was reliable and with no issues, but hopefully Microsoft will fix all these issues. And basically whenever you're navigating to the gallery section, it will flash a white screen. Also, whenever you create a new tab. Also, when you turn the details pane on or off, it will flash. Also, whenever you are selecting more details while copying files. So yeah, Microsoft says that is working to resolve this issue and will provide more information when it is available. Also, another pretty interesting thing is that the password icon might be missing or invisible in the lock screen sign in options. After installing the August 2025 non-security preview update or later, you might notice that the password icon is not visible in the sign in options on the lock screen, you will be able to find that only if you hover over the space where the icon should appear. So I think this is also something pretty interesting that you have to be aware of, but Microsoft is stating that they are working on a fix for this as well. So this is pretty much it. This is the biggest 2025 and 25H2 update that we're getting on the main release. This is basically the last feature update in the year 2025 for Windows 11 on the main release. So of course, us still having this issue with the file explorer is something that is pretty sad in my opinion, but hopefully Microsoft will fix it as soon as possible. For more information about this build and other updates, make sure to check the article below or the official Microsoft blog post. And if you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to leave a like below and also subscribe to the TechBase channel with the notification bell activated so that you won't miss any future uploads like this one. As you from TechBase, until next time, have a nice day.